Hey, and thanks for joining us for Parkview Online. I'm Dan, one of the pastors here. Over the next hour or so, our goal is to help you take a next step toward God. Wherever you happen to be on your faith journey, we believe that you have a step to take, and we want to help you discover what that is. In just a moment, we're going to join our broadcast campus where the band will lead us in some music and we'll hear a message based on the Bible that we can all apply to our lives. During the service, you're probably going to end up hearing a reference to the next steps area in a lobby or something specific to an experience that's happening at one of our physical campuses. But what we want you to know is that you can take very similar next steps online. And if there's ever a time when you want to learn more about how to do that, just shoot me an email at online at parkviewchurch.com. We'd love to help you figure out which next step is the right one for you. There are a couple of other quick things that we want you to know. First, if you're watching with a group of people and we can help you in any way, we'd love to. That means different things for different groups, but we'd love to have the conversation with you. And then second, if you're watching and you'd like to get connected to some people in your area, or you'd like some information about connecting to one of our physical campuses in the Chicagoland area, again, just reach out via email. The address is online at parkviewchurch.com. Ultimately, today, we want our time together to encourage you. We want you to get some practical insight from the Bible, and we want to help you take your next step with God and with other people. We're really glad you're here. Enjoy the service. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Parkview. It's great to see you this afternoon. Would you stand, please? And let's spend some time worshiping together today. You can have my yes with no exception. I'm laying down my rights to second guessing. You can have my yes. I'm giving you my fear of never knowing. Whatever's coming next, I know you got me. You can have my yes. Even in the fire, I know you got me. I'm giving you my yes again. You're the lamp, you're the light, you're the cloud that guides me. You're the way, you're the truth, you're the life inside me. You conquered my fears, so I leave it all behind. I'm running to the lights. I'll follow you wherever you are, wherever you want to go. I'll follow you wherever you are, wherever you want to go. I'll follow you. I'm going with you, God. Come on. 
God, we are so grateful for the opportunity to sing those words, to unite and stand in solidarity around the fact that we believe in you. We believe that you rose again and that you, Jesus, are Lord. Thank you for that truth. Sometimes we need to hear it when circumstances in the world feel feel like they're just totally out of control and it's pretty possible that some of us might be feeling that way now in this moment after the week that our world has experienced. So we thank you that you are the powerful God who is in control of all things. You are Lord. And we're just amazed by that. Thank you for your love for us. Thank you for this time that we can enjoy together. We pray all this in the amazing name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Amen. You can have a seat, everybody. Well, hey, everyone. I want to welcome you to Parkview. So glad that you are here this weekend. If you're around the building, so glad that you're here. And if you're online with us, just want to welcome you. Thanks for connecting with us while we worship together. It's so good to worship God, isn't it? It's great to sing to Him and to celebrate all that He's doing in our lives. In fact, there's a lot happening here at Parkview, too. Uh, because God's doing a great thing in and through his church. And so if you want to kind of stay in step with us, uh, be on the journey with us, we'd love for you to do that. You can go to parkviewchurch.com slash this week, and that will be updated uh, from week to week. You'll be able to stay in step with us and all that's taking place at our church. You know, I love Parkview because we get a chance to reach people who feel really far from God. It's a really big value of ours. And we wouldn't be able to do that if it wasn't for the amazing uh, people just like you who continue to give 
every week. Uh, you guys continue to support the ministries of our church, and we're reaching people who are feeling far from God. And so if you want to do that today, uh, you can do that by going online throughout our service, or you can, if you want to do it in person, you can drop a gift off at the back of the room as you leave today. Speaking of great experiences, we've got an incredible opportunity for you coming up here at Parkview. It's one of our flagship opportunities. It's called Rooted. And if you've been around for a while, you know that Rooted is one of those things here at Parkview that we love to talk about. It's because it makes a difference. In fact, one of my first experiences with Rooted was not actually being in a Rooted group, but actually going to a memorial service where I witnessed a Rooted family, uh, a Rooted group of people step up through that entire service and minister to a family who is facing some incredible difficult times. Rooted is one of those places where you not only develop meaningful relationships, but you also learn a little bit more about God. And so we would love for you to participate in that. You can do that by signing up online, or if you're here in person, uh, you can go out to our Rooted booth and, and ask some questions. We'd love for you to be a part of that. It launches Thursday, September 9th. There's so many incredible things happening in our church. I'm so glad that you've joined us. And if you're online, glad you connected with us. Enjoy the rest of the service. Welcome to At The Movies, everybody. Here's what we're going to do, okay? Um, I went live on location to film this, okay? So I just want you to know, um, live from a baseball field in Mokina, Illinois, um, <laughs> you will see my portion, my portion of the Sandlot. I just want to explain why we're doing what we're doing and welcome all of you at all of our campuses, Homer Glenn, glad to have you guys here. Welcome at New Lenox, welcome at Orland, welcome online. And, and I want to tell you why we're doing this, okay? Um, I just literally checked my phone for a news feed because I started thinking, as soon as I start mentioning all the bad things that are going on, I may have missed something because I didn't pay attention today. You know what I mean? I mean, you, w there's a hurricane headed toward the northeast. I, I didn't even know about that. I just found that out. And, of course, we've got this stuff going on with Haiti and the possible cholera thing that could happen that could be a lot worse, and obviously Afghanistan. And we're all dealing with the Delta variant and COVID. And, and sometimes you just kind of want to throw up your hands, right? And, and so sometimes as a church, we want to just bring you what we just did in worship, which was amazing for my heart, and I hope it was for you. We've got to draw you near to God. And sometimes we need to just celebrate life and the good things that go on in life. And so at the movies is a way for us, and, and trust me, I didn't come up with this idea originally. It was Jesus who used stories to do teaching of biblical principles. And today, it's already been ruined for you. You don't know what the other four movies are, but you already know we're doing The Sandlot. Schmalz is here. It's a beautiful story of friendship and a beautiful story of that beast that you might be afraid of and how to conquer it. Um, so let me pray for us, and here we go. Lord Jesus, we all need you. Um, the people in Afghanistan need you. The people in Haiti need you. Uh, but we all need you. Um, we, we were hoping to get some kind of normal, and it's not looking that way. And we're tired, and we're discouraged. So today, we just need a lesson from a bunch of kids that love each other and face the beast together. And please, let it, let it show us the love that we can have for each other through the hard times and the love that you can give us. And it's in your name we pray, amen. Here we are at the Sandlot. I love it because we're at the little baseball park behind my house where I made my uh, oldest daughter, Rachel, try to play baseball, uh, softball, because you know she was such a music person and a bookworm. She, I just thought maybe it would expand her horizons, but uh, she doesn't have any sports skills at all. But we figured that out, she hated it. The Sandlot is a story from the early 60s about a new kid in town. His last name is one of the best known single word lines from any movie, Smalls. Some fun facts, 
The chewing tobacco was made of licorice and bacon bits, um, and they said it was so nasty that combined with riding all the carnival rides, they got sick just like it would have been tobacco anyway. The vomit uh, in that scene, by the way, was a mixture of split pea soup, baked beans, oatmeal, water, and jello, which would also make you want to barf anyway. It's partly autobiographical. The movie was inspired by a childhood experience of the uh, co-writer and director David Mickey Evans' brother. Some older boys wouldn't let Evans play baseball with him, and when they lost a ball over the brick wall, uh, he thought he'd get on their good side by retrieving it for them. And when he hopped the wall, he found a giant dog named Hercules waiting for him, uh, except this time he was bitten. Um, Benny uh, and his older self at the end of the film are actually brothers in real life. I think that's fun. And Mr. Myrtle's voice, um, I mean, if you haven't put that together, is also Darth Vader. Luke, I have your baseball. Okay, here we go. The movie takes place in the summer of 1962 when a reserved fifth grader moves in with his, moves with his parents to a suburb of Los Angeles and he doesn't know anyone and he's struggling to make friends. So to help, he decides to go join the neighborhood boys who play baseball at the local sandlot. I don't know if you've ever moved someplace where you were the new person that didn't know anyone. Um, I did. I moved uh, a lot and it wasn't easy. I moved just before kindergarten from Oklahoma City to Denver. And in fourth grade, we moved back to a different part of Oklahoma City. And in eighth grade, I moved to Enid, Oklahoma. And if you've ever moved, usually one of the toughest things is making new friends, good friends. I mean, honestly, if you psychoanalyzed me, you would probably realize that the reason I am uh, uh, was the class clown and am a comedian and am the kind of person that I am is probably because I had to learn at an early age to go in and make friends right away. So I'm, I'm good at it. Um, I don't know why, but the memory is etched in my mind of the first day at school and it's, it's lunch, right? I don't know anyone, I'm so nervous about where I should sit. Um, and do you wanna see a picture of me in seventh grade? Okay, but promise not to laugh. Yeah, those glasses. I mean, who wouldn't wanna sit next to that kid? When's the last time you were a new person in a new environment? It could be a new job, new school, neighborhood, maybe brand new at Parkview, wondering if this is the church for you. Just first of all, just let me say that I'm really glad you're here, and I really hope that Parkview is a place that you feel right at home. We wanna do that. But what the Sandlot is gonna teach us is that no matter who you are, no matter how new you are, whether you've been around for a long time, God designed you to have strong relationships around you. Not just relationships, notice I said strong relationships. In fact, one of our greatest values at Parkview is creating a place where you can find community real people to do life with, because it's one of God's greatest desires for you. I mean, if I asked you what you are most thankful for, I'm pretty sure most of you wouldn't say a car or a house or a thing, you would say a person. Relationships are the most important thing in life. That's why our church does not consider our mission complete when someone attends a worship gathering or joins us online. We wanna get you connected in relationship. And for Smalls, one great person, Benny, is gonna come alongside him and help make that happen. I love that scene because it proves two things. When you are new, oftentimes it's the fear of looking dumb or making a fool out of ourselves that keeps us from plugging in. And the second thing is what really helps is when someone takes us under their wing and introduces us. No matter how old you are or what environments comprise your life, someone needs you to be their Benny. And the great thing about being a Benny is the qualifications are easy to meet. You just have to include someone. It's pretty basic, right? There's not a single person hearing me who doesn't have what it takes to pull someone into their circle. Some of you show up on the weekends, but you've never joined a group during the week. In other words, you're doing church without real community. And to shoot straight with you, for some of you, the reason you haven't joined a group is you just don't have time or you can't find a babysitter or whatever. And those are excuses. As I talked about a couple of weeks ago with Reset, I think maybe the real issue is maybe you want to avoid a brand new situation where you might be uncomfortable. And I understand that, I do. So if you're a person in a group, take somebody 
anybody under your wing, and if you're the person who doesn't have anybody, you're gonna have to take a step out of your comfort zone. The first time I went skydiving, um, it was my 40th birthday, and uh, my wife surprised me with it. Um, because, you know, I'd always like driven by those skydive Chicago signs and said, oh, that'd be fun to do someday. Of course, I didn't really mean it. I was just being macho, but she thought I meant it. So for my 40th birthday, you know, this big surprise, you're going skydiving. So I'm like, well, I guess I have to do it now. But the fun thing is she knew I wouldn't want to do it alone. So she coaxed our good friend, Steve Grind. Shout out to you, Steve. Uh, who was way more nervous about it than I was to go along and go with me. A and the, the fact of the matter is, however scared I was of jumping out of the plane, all I had to do was look at Steve, and he was way more afraid than I was, and it kind of made everything go a lot better. So, love you, buddy. For those of you that have never joined a, a group, you are missing one of the most powerful things that God will use to grow your faith. Because sometimes you're going to be like, I'm kind of nervous about this, but you're going to look over and see Steve and he's going to be flipping through his Bible going, I don't even know where that is and what, what am I doing? And, and he's going to have that look in his eyes and you're going to be like, okay, maybe I got this. And maybe you're, you're going to be Steve. And um, you know what? We're going to wrap our arms around you. You don't need to know anything about the Bible. You can be brand new in your faith. No one's gonna call on you to turn to a passage or ask you to pray out loud. It's just an amazing chance to encourage each other. And I can guarantee you, groups are how you grow. Bible says, as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. You get that analogy, right? I mean, that's how they did it back then. You can't really grow and be sharpened on your own. You need others, we all do. I find it interesting that Jesus himself didn't do life on his own. You watched the scene from The Chosen last week. I really want to encourage you. I hardly ever encourage you to watch Christian stuff, but I really want to encourage you to get online, go to Peacock or whatever and watch The Chosen and watch Jesus do life with these 12 people. It, I mean, why? He was, the, he, he was the son of God. Did he need these people around him? Yes, he did. And what the group did together, they all sharpened each other because of it. The Hebrew writer says, let us consider how we may spur one another on. You get that, right? You got this, buddy. It's like, you know, you're working out with somebody, a trainer, whatever, one more set. Spur one another on towards love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. It's remarkable what happens when we're in community in the church. I've had several in, in our time, obviously, neighborhood groups and, and, uh, and all kinds of stuff. But man, a few months ago, we got together with our first small group. I'm talking 1990 to probably uh, 2000. And um, our friends Daryl and Nancy were in from out of town. They moved away during that period, but they were back in. And one of our former members of that, one of our members of that group was having a birthday. And we haven't been a small group in over 20 years, and it was unbelievable. Hear the emotion in my voice. It was unbelievable. It was like we picked up exactly where we left off. And a lot of us went through a lot of hard times in those times in our group. And, and, and the truth of the matter is, a lot of us haven't been around each other that much, not nearly in the close relationships we were back then, but I can tell you something, Parkview, those people in my first small group absolutely saved Parkview because those early years were hard as, as we were transitioning the church out of an inward focus to an outward focus. A lot of people didn't like it, but those people were there for me. And because of that, I've been able to be there for you. Benny helped encourage Smalls to get into their group. Maybe there's someone in your life that you need to encourage to join your group, or maybe you're just the one that needs to initially take that step of signing up for a group. One of the big reasons you need community is because at some time, at some point in life, we're all gonna hit hard times. We're all gonna go through loss and pain and discouragement and struggling in our faith. And for the Sandlot crew, that happens only when they lose their only baseball over the fence. Might not seem like a big deal, but you can't play baseball without a ball. So Smalls goes home to get one of his stepdad's baseballs. What he doesn't know is that it's one of the rarest collectibles around. But instead of me explaining.
that baseball would be worth like up to 50 grand today, depending on how much the dog chewed it up. Tough times show you who your real friends are, who you can really rely on. And the thing is, you can have a lot of people who are acquaintances or say they are your friends, but when tough times come, you get to see who your real friends really are. Listen to Proverbs 18. Someone with many companions may find themselves alone in difficult times. That's hilarious. It's like he could look down through the future and see Facebook right there, right? He who, who has many friends on Facebook may find themselves alone in difficult times because they might not really be your friends, but there is one true friend who is actually closer than a family member, than a brother. I think one of the gifts of 2020 should have been the revelation of the state of your relationships. Did you have the right people around you in community? The way I think about it is, do you have people or a group of people, even better, that you could call at 2 a.m. and know that they're going to pick up the phone? I don't know what Denise and I would have done without our close friend community, our small group community through our lives, and especially through the last year. And it was really helpful for me to have close friends on like different sides of all the issues that we were dealing with. It was very important to help give me the balance that I needed. And honestly, one of my greatest burdens for you in the past year was that you had the right community around you. I was praying that. Uh, I just, I, I don't know what any of us would have done without our friends and family through the last year. And I'm not gonna ask you if you have friends like that. I'm gonna ask you a tougher question. Are you a friend like that? God wants us to have that kind of community, to be that kind of church where we can be that kind of friend to others, to be there when the going gets tough to be the Benny. Anyone can stick around when everything is going well and life is up and to the right, but getting through the tough times together is what makes our relationship stronger and it turns us into the people that God wants us to be. The Bible says we should rejoice with those who rejoice. Yeah, that's great, but we should also mourn with those who mourn. And it's amazing what a difference it can make when someone like Benny opens up the circle and invites someone like Smalls inside. In our movie, this group's friendship is about to go to another level. After multiple failed attempts to get the Babe Ruth ball back from the beast, Benny has a dream. Watching that scene, you know, what's going through my mind, I couldn't help but think how nice that dog was and how most cats would have probably scratched your eyes out. What I love about this movie is there's a really powerful parable about the power of relationships, having friends in your life, connecting to your church community that you can count on. I need it, you need it, we all need it. Tough times reveal who your friends really are, don't they? I mean, just two weeks ago, I spent some time with my stinkling buddies, my, my guys who are my support network, the other four other, three other pastors who have hung out with me for the last 15 years. And I can't tell you, I don't know that any of us would still be doing what we're doing if it wasn't for each other. So the question is, do you have that kind of community? And if you don't, let me tell you the secret of great relationships. And if you know today you need a better community around you, I wanna challenge you to invest in it. Don't expect it to magically happen. You have to sow some seeds. What would that look like practically? Well, if you're already in a group, invite someone, be the Benny and invite somebody that you know needs it. If you aren't in a group, be Smalls and walk over to the baseball field, you know? It's easy to find a group at Parkview. We've got hundreds of them all over the place. We've got a group near you. We've made it easy for you. You can go to our app and hit find a group and type in your address and all the groups around you will appear. And it'll give you details about the people that are in there. It'll give you their you know, net worth, their social security number, um, you know, likes and dislikes. We're basically Google. And, and you can pick a, pick a group that way, okay? And we're gonna also start rooted back up again. If you haven't done that, you know how important that is. Um, you've heard us talk about it. If you don't know, go check it out online. 10 week program to get you grounded in your faith rooted. And we also have these alpha groups that are meeting now, most of them in bars, which is a great place for people who are searching and, and want to know more about Jesus. The alpha groups are fantastic. It's taught over and over again in scripture that you reap what you sow. 
Galatians says you will always harvest what you plant. And Jesus said the measure that you use, it will be measured to you. So if you don't have friendships right now, it may be because you're not investing in them. So maybe you've been wondering about your year. Is 21 going to be any better? Because it's hard to tell so far, right? And what about 22? I'm going to make it real simple for you, okay? I have a pot here. Um, if I want to grow some tomatoes in this pot, um, what do I need to do? Because right now I've, I've just, this is not a tomato for those of you that don't. This is a weed I just got out of the dugout, okay? If I want this to turn into tomatoes, what do I need to do? I need to get my hands dirty. I, I, need to, <laughs> I need to get rid of the weed, and I need to plant some tomatoes, and I need to water it, and I need to cultivate it, and I need to feed it, okay? And if I'm willing to do that and, and get my hands dirty, then later this year I'll have tomatoes. So let's call this pot your year. And if you're looking at your year right now thinking, wow, I don't know how this is going to work, kind of barren, wish I had some good friends and we could do some stuff together, then here's what you do. You plant it. You don't sit around waiting you plant it. You make it happen for yourself. You make it happen for someone else. Reach out and be a friend. Plan some fun stuff and invite some people to join you. Just do it. How do you have the best year of your life? You invest in relationships. And what you plant, you will get back. Not immediately, but eventually. And in the meantime, God will bless you because you're acting like Jesus, reaching out and being a friend. And that makes God smile. And who's living on the other side of the fence? You know, that fence is a whole nother thing. Who is it that you're afraid of that, that you're like, well, they've got a big dog or, or, or they don't look like me or whatever. What about that person over the fence? What about the beast or, or Mr. Myrtle? You thought of them as fellow citizens. If you started thinking of them as fellow citizens in God's family, like Ephesians 2 says, what if you saw someone that, that, that doesn't really belong on the other side of the fence? They belong with me. You see them that way. They belong in God's household. What if we all realize that God's household is not complete without that person living in it? We're going to concentrate on that this year, Parkview, because the household of God is incomplete with whoever that person is living outside of it. And that means together with you, they've got to be here with us, joined together through Jesus. On our side of the fence, they always feel like strangers and aliens, but we've got to get them on our side of the fence. We've got to go meet them. We've got to be where they are. And this isn't easy to do because like the boys, many of us have built them up over and over again through our imagination or our brief experience or our muddled perception of who they are, right? It's easy to continue that perception. Just listen to the, the Facebook people who are on your side of that perception, I hope say to say things like, well, I'll be on their side of the fence as soon as we agree. Um, I'll forgive them once they forgive me. I'll befriend them once they agree to befriend me. That's not the attitude of Christ. Because the attitude of Christ is that God demonstrated his love for us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So what are the seeds of friendship? Uh, make a text. Make a call, extend an invitation, share a blessing, offer a comfort, accept a comfort, touch base because it's been a while. Like gardening and farming, no guarantees, no predetermined results. Sometimes it goes well and it changes your life for the good. And when you invest, you might just end up with a great set of relationships that God uses for a season or even for a lifetime. I love that last picture. That's the picture of the church. That's a picture of real community, of real friendships. I'm convinced there are many people today, your real issue is you're just isolated, you're lonely, you're trying to do life on your own. And it's the one thing that's holding you back from growing and experiencing God's best for you. And I want more for you. And God wants more for you. And can I point out something to you right here? I want to show you this picture because this is what the beast really looked like. <laughs> it was just a big puppet, okay? I want you to see that picture and I want you to realize that whatever it is that you're afraid of out there and getting to know another person and going over the fence, it is 
that, that misperception that the beast is going to hurt you. The beast is just a big puppet. Take a step today. Take a step in your faith to get in a group, to get connected that will transform you more than you could possibly imagine. And can I just say, if you've got needs right now, I'm not asking you to just go do that. Ask any of our pastors or our staff. We will be happy to help you. And please don't forget, you're always going to have Jesus. We're going to do communion here in just a few minutes. Your campus pastor is going to lead you. Jesus said, there's no greater love than to lay down his life for his friends, and you are my friends. You didn't choose me. I chose you. He chose us. He included us. He laid down his life for us. Who could ask for more in a friend? That's the place to start. So hold on to what we've been talking about. Your campus pastor is going to come out and lead you into communion and close us out today in prayer. It's a good movie. (laughs) We have a great God, right? A great God who loves us, who's done so much for us. And now we get to celebrate that together. Uh, Hopefully, uh, you, when you came in, you were grabbed one of these communion packs. If you're online with us, now would be a great time to go grab maybe some crackers and some juice. But let's take a minute now and let's just reflect on the greatness, the goodness, the deep, deep love of our Savior, how much he's done for us. And then we'll come back in a few minutes and we'll take communion together. not sure what you heard so far this weekend, but God loves you very much. He loves you that he died for you. And maybe that's one thing you can hold on to today, that God loves you beyond all things, that he'd give up his son just for you. And every time we eat this bread and every time we drink this cup, we're proclaiming that, that one day he's going to come back. So let's take and eat together. The body of Christ given for you, take and eat. Now the blood of Christ shed for you. Take and drink. Let's pray together, shall we? God, we just want to say thank you. I want to say thank you for loving us. Thank you for being our God. Thank you for stepping into our world and making things uh, right with us. Thank you that one day we have a hope and a future, all because of the love of Jesus. God, help us to love people the well, the way that you've done that to us. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. And everyone said, amen. So glad you made it this weekend. If you've by chance never seen The Sandlot, I've got good news for you. We have a premiere watch party happening right after this service here at our campus. Uh, The screens are set up outside. We've got hot dogs and some fun stuff out there, some games for the kids. Uh, It's going to be an incredible time just to be together enjoy each other's company, build some friendships, and watch a really good movie, all right? So stick around. We'd love to have you. Uh, With that in mind, why don't we stand up together? As you do, don't forget, we've got the Rooted Booth out there. We'd love for you to sign up. As you leave this weekend, may the Lord bless you, and may he keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may he turn his face towards you and grant you peace this day and forevermore. Amen. Have a great weekend, everyone. We'll see you next time.